What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down some double move routes that I want to share with you guys to really help you guys get better, know how to sell a route, know how to use some moves to get some separation at the top of the route, and just overall just become a better receiver. And guys, if you're a receiver and you want to get faster, become more explosive, just be able to get into your routes a little bit quicker, create more energy at the top, check out that link in the description that says Speed Workout Plan. It's a full 28-day plan, about 8 to 10 exercises per day to help you become a faster, more explosive wide receiver. Hope to get you guys on that soon. Let's get started. So this first class clip here we're going to be looking at is like I wanted to include this on here because it's not really a set I would say double move route he's running a dig right this is Keenan Allen here get working working out in the off season but he kind of sets it up off of a comeback break and I want to talk to you guys about how you could sell this route on a comeback how you could just break down and the comeback stem can be kind of used anytime you take an outside release so let's watch it full speed then we'll break it down so he kind of gives that slide release and we're going to talk about that as well because I think that's going to be important to include here because this is the situation on a slide release where we don't get the chance to break the DB and he doesn't uh, slide with us. So when we work this kind of hesitation slide, right? I work this slide out here. This DB, you're forcing him to make a decision when you go to this 45 degree angle and you stay in a good range. You're making him either come at you. He's got to either come at you with two hands and try to jam and get physical. And if he does that and he gets his body on like almost a 45 here, he doesn't have his base, right? He's not in a strong base. So all I got to do is have a plan for my hands, make sure I'm in a strong pad level and be able to get him off, right? Or what he's going to do is he's going to try to shuffle with us and then I just beat him with speed right so we end up sliding and what does he do he tries to come at us but look at this he pops up he loses his base here he's a little bit long with his body right so what do i have to do i want to take an outside release so i know i just got to beat his outside arm so i swat his arm and you look what happens when he lunges and he's off balance and we get his arm off right we're able to get some separation we're able to work back up over the top of him okay that's what called that's what you call having a plan at, with this slide release you know the slide release too you got to be react be able to react right Right? Releases sometimes is about reacting. You slide, maybe he slides with you, and I just go. I try to get him to stop that tempo. Now I slide, he comes at me. Okay, I got a plan for that. Let's just beat his outside arm, and then let's get upfield, and let's really work to restack and dip that shoulder. Now you see how he's here. What does he do? He kind of peeks back for this ball. That's this is so this is so complicated of a route. Like when if you were trying to run this the first time you did it, and it's a lot. So I suggest you break it up piece by piece. Right? You work drills for the slide. You know you understand the technique of the slide. And then maybe you work the peek back, and then you're going to work this almost square cut sell and come back at the top of the route right it's, it's very tough to put all this stuff together but that's why these guys are some of the best in the world and that's why Keenan Allen's arguably one of the best route runners in the world right so you see how when he breaks down here right he snaps at the outside leg one two three four and he gives this cut with gives this little head and shoulder shake and that's where this db is gonna go right we're selling like we're just running a comeback he's just coming here peeking back for that ball right getting this db to believe vertical right we've maybe done a peek back and ran a comeback before now i set it up right it, it, there's a couple of things you could do you could do this slide and then go and just dog him on a fade. You could do this slide, then go, peek back, break it off on a comeback. You do a slide, then go, peek back, sell this comeback and run a dig. That's fr looks the exact same from the release to the break point on all four of those routes, all three of those routes, right? But we could create separation every single time if we do it correctly, right? So that's what those eyes serve to do. Now, so when he breaks down, one, two, three, four, he gives that head and shoulder shake. DB will be disciplined looking at these hips. And if you give that hip fake to the outside, you give a little bit of a lean to the outside, that's what can get him to bite. And then we come back underneath. That's a great route here by Keenan Allen. Let's watch it again one more time. So slide, go, Peek back, have a plan for my hands at the line first, then peek back, one, two, three, four, head and shoulder fake to the outside. It's very similar to like a square cut almost, just selling this thing, running a dig with a comeback stem. So let's watch it again one more time. Slide, get those hands off, work up field, one, two, three, four, head and shoulder fake, great job at the top of the route here. Okay, so now we're going to be looking at a sluggo here, and this sluggo is going to build, we're going to be looking at a sluggo, then we're going to be looking at a post out. I didn't want to include, you know, the basic out and up, post corner, all that stuff, because it's kind of the same principles apply on a sluggo and on a post out. So we're just going to talk about the principles of a double move how to sell this thing and what you need to do after you make that cut to the double move so we watch here rugs from the slot it's coming out breaks to this but this is like more like a post and go not so much a sluggo so it's like a pogo route here now when he comes off I want you to see he keeps the same speed into the break, then he breaks this thing here. Now, when he breaks to the inside, a DB is supposed to be disciplined, right? Now, his discipline comes from looking at those hips, but not not his eyes, right? So everybody loves to say, oh, when you break to the post, make sure you sell it with your eyes. I could still look back to the ball and be drifting upfield with my left shoulder and rounding this thing out, and I'm not going to get any separation. So what I look back for the ball, DB's not supposed to be looking there anyways. We still do want to look back, right? Because looking back will help you and make it easier to commit 
commit your hips and commit your shoulders on this post break. And if you get your shoulders and your hips committed on this post break, that's what will get this DB to drive and maybe get a little bit greedy when I commit my whole body to the move, right? So now, when it's like a post corner, post out, uh, or post corner, corner post, out and up, normally it's three steps to this break. See how he's here? Bam. One, two, three. And now when we break off on the third step, it's got to be sudden, right? I don't want to reach out for it because they go – you should look at every single route from like a DB perspective. If you lean back here and you try to make this long cut, this is what everybody likes to do, and then you drag this back leg and you reach with your front leg because you feel like you got to reach out for your cuts, that's going to be slow and that gives that DB more time to react. But if we could just pop my foot in the ground, like the way I tell my guys to think of it is like, like you ever see a jackhammer, how they just go on the ground chewing up that cement? That's how you want your first initial step to be. It's just like a jackhammer. You're just shooting it right in the ground and that's what's going to burst you back up field, right? So I sell this thing with my shoulders, with my hips, with my eyes pop this foot in the ground and then i'm here now if you have a quarterback who understands this this is if who understands the concept of putting air on the ball this is something that you could do now again I, i've seen a lot of quarterbacks just completely miss this throw and or wait for this ball you don't really necessarily know when they're going to throw this thing and so it's kind of tough to do this when you have a quarterback who might not understand that it tries to throw everything on a line and um or just throws it a little bit too early right or that maybe doesn't have the strongest arm so again KYP, right? Know your personnel. But at the end of the day, this is the correct technique and this is the technique you have to use when you're at a high level of high school football or you're in the college level where all the quarterbacks are fairly decent. So when we break up field here, you see how he's not open yet. So he's not looking back for the ball. He's got his head down. I'm pumping my arms. I'm driving. After I create that energy to the post break, right, I break off my left leg, right, left, right. I'm pushing off of that right leg that I made on the third step of the post. That's shooting me back out. I'm keeping my head down. Pumping my arms, and I'm not looking till I got this dude by about two, three steps. Now I'm looking back for the ball because I got him here. And if you start looking too soon and you lean back because it's just natural, you're just going to slow down when you're looking back. He's going to recover because he knows he got beat. He's got his head down. He ain't worried about looking back for the ball. He's playing you. He's got his head down. He's trying to catch up. Ruggs is a unique player because he's got so much speed, so it's a lot easier for him, right? But a guy who doesn't have as much speed needs to really keep my head down. Let's get separation first and then look back for the ball in a situation like this. Okay, great job here by his post and go route. Let's watch it again one more time. So he comes off here, break, one, two, three. Very smooth out of his cuts. Don't look back until we got this guy by about two to three steps. All right, so now we're going to be looking at this post out here. Now, I think the main thing is here, we're going to talk about the break to get out of the post route, all right? So this is something I was working on a little bit yesterday with some of my receivers, and the biggest thing they struggled with is not so much getting into the post, not so much selling the post with their eyes, and you look, same same idea. Hips committed, shoulders committed, eyes back to the quarterback. It was getting back out to the out route efficiently, right? Because the easy part is being able to break, run this post and sell post. That's the easy part, but the hard part, they call us a blaze out as well, you blaze out what that means is you're just essentially breaking down getting out of it one two three you're snapping down it's another name for it and that's probably the more common name to use i just say post out because I, this is you know it's a little bit easier to understand for some of you that don't know necessarily or might be fairly new so when we go here it's the same idea as a post corner corner post out and up three steps like i said so he's here one two three and on that third step we want to snap down so some guys will run this off of a straight up speed cut. Now that's a harder thing to do. I like this snap technique because it really can force me to get back on this 90 and I drop abruptly, right? So you see how he's here and when you see when he drops it, we were struggling with yesterday with my guys is they would lean back and they would try to drop here and when they'd snap with this leg, their back would be straight up and down. They'd have a vertical posture right here and they'd be trying to turn out of this thing. They'd be trying to turn, they'd be trying to snap with the left and then open up this right shoulder to turn out of it. You you want to run out of it. You want to create some energy. So you got to make sure when you snap down here, you're going chin to knee. You're being violent with your hips and you're getting an explosive position so you can pivot off this step, hook with the third step, and that third step is what pushes you out. And you see how he ain't turning. He's running out of it. Here, I'll draw. He's running out of this break so he keeps explosion. So he keeps explosion and he can actually snap the head around and make a play. This is a great job, a great post out technique. Let's watch it again or blaze out. It's coming off here. Third outside, one, two, three, snap it off, one, two, three, get back to the outside. Great route here. Great job running a post out. All right, guys, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Again, if you're a receiver, you want to get a little bit faster, you want to get a little bit more explosive, or just any athlete in general, check out that link in the description that says Speed Workout Plan. And, guys, if you have any questions, please leave those in the comments. I'll make sure to get back to you. I'll see you guys next time.